Ezekiel chapter number 5. Continuing from chapter 4 and chapter 3. Sometimes the chapter market, I mean, they're not by God. I mean, they're plays. In, in proper order, you see it by God. But when you read chapter uh, 4, verse 17, then you'll go right into, and thou son of man. There is no split. Take there a sharp knife. Now we were told last chapter he's going to lay on his left side, he's going to lay on his right side. He's going to have this this diet by uh, measure, his drink by measure. Take thee a barber's razor and cause it to pass upon thy head and upon thy beard. Then take thee take the balances to weigh and divide the hair. So, Ezekiel, give yourself a little haircut and a little beard trim, but don't throw the hair away. Get a scale. Thou shalt burn with fire a third part in the midst of the city. So take three, divide the hair into three parts. One of it you're going to burn in the middle of the city. When the days of the siege are fulfilled, that will be after the third time Nebuchadnezzar comes in. Or maybe he's talking about the second one. Because Ezekiel's gone before Jerusalem is destroyed. Ezekiel's in Babylon as Jeremiah is preaching to the people in Jerusalem and in Judah. And thou shalt take a third part and smite about it with a knife. Alright, so one, one third is put into a fire. One third is, he takes a knife to the hair. And a third part, the last part, thou shalt scatter in the wind. And I will draw out a sword after them. So this hair is a reference to something. It's divided in three parts. Fire, knife, and wind. Thou shalt also take thereof a few in number and bind them in thy skirts. So I can assume when he takes the part in the wind, with the fire, they burn up. The knife they're cut in half. The only ones that remain whole are the ones that are put to the wind. Pick a few of them up off the ground. And bind them in thy skirts. And the men wore a skirt back then. Then take of them again. Out of your skirt. No, there's no number what he has, but he says a few. And cast them into the midst of the fire. And burn them in the fire. So fire shows up twice. For thereof shall a fire come forth into all the house of Israel. So the hair here is a type of people. Illustrations is what God, what Jesus, what Ezekiel, what what is used. Illustrations show a point clearly. Thus saith the Lord God, this is Jerusalem. What? The hair. It's a city. It's the people. I have set it in the midst of the nation and the countries that are round about her. Jerusalem to God is the center of the world. What God just said. And she shall change my judgment into wickedness. More than the nations. Look at that. That's what's going on in Jeremiah. And my statutes more than the countries that are round about her. For they have refused my judgments and my statutes. They have not walked in them. 
And that's what Jeremiah is preaching to him. That's what Jeremiah is telling him to get right. And God is telling Ezekiel, who's in Babylon, that first captivity, they've still got a hardened head. They're still not listening. And there are Jews in Babylon right now with Ezekiel. Well, everything will be okay. My family's going to be saved. God is, just, you know, and Ezekiel saying, no, it is not okay. It is far from over. We haven't even started in 70 years. Jerusalem has not been destroyed. It's been attacked. The kings have been taken away. There have been people killed. But the city and the temple are still standing. And she has changed my judgments into wickedness. And we see that through Jeremiah. And they won't follow, verse 6. They won't listen, verse 6. The destruction that has happened already has not changed the people. Verse 7. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, because ye multiply more than the nations that are round about you. You think Sodom and Gomorrah was bad? God just told you Judah and Jerusalem were worse. And have not walked in my statutes. Neither have done according to the judgments of the nation. Second Chronicles 33, 9. That are round about you. Remember, when they were going to land, they were supposed to get rid of the nations. But you know what Solomon did? He married all the women who could marry and adopted all the gods. You know what the Jews did with the, the people of the land? They adopted all the gods. I bet you could find places in the world that were not killing their children. But Judah was. There are places in the world they didn't worship the Queen of Heaven, but Judah did. And Judah and Jerusalem had what God told them. They had the law. They knew what God expected. They knew what God wanted. And they disobeyed. That's worse. You know what the worst sinner is today in the world? Is a man who's saved, who has a Bible, and knows what the Bible says, and will not do what the Bible tells him to do. You know what the next second worst sinner there is in the world? American. Maybe even Chinese. Because you can go anywhere to get a Bible. In China, I don't think you can go anywhere to get a Bible, but you can go online in China. Unless they got the internet blocked some way. But in America, you can go online, you can go to a store, you can go to a library. You can have access to a Bible in America. It has not been forbidden. It has not been against the law. An American cannot tell God at the judgment, Oh, I never knew. Yeah, but you had a Bible. Well, I didn't want it. Well, that's your obligation. That's your error. But it was there. It was there. But the worst sin of all is to reject the Lord Jesus Christ, which is found in the Bible. The Jews knew exactly what the God expected. He knew you weren't supposed to kill. That's that's one of the big ten commandments. What were they doing with their children? I believe Jeremiah spoke about uh, the fathers were having the, 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 their, their children's wives and the children were having their father's wives and all that. Uh, thou shalt not commit adultery. And even the law, there's a specific chapter in Leviticus that speaks about sexual sin. God says, thou shalt have no other gods but me. Chapter 1. And yet they were making bread and, and offering drinks to the Queen of Heaven, which was never mentioned by God. They were serving gods that were not even written by name in the Bible. 
until God told us what they were doing. That's why they got sacked. So what do you think God's going to do to a person who's heard a street preacher, who's had a gospel, who's, who's heard some kind of preaching, who had a radio state, or had access to a Bible, even though maybe he didn't get to it? What do you think God's going to judge you as? What did he judge his people? And in America will be worse, well, the worst nation because she's had a Bible. She's had a Bible in the schools. She's had a Bible in the judge uh, in the courtroom. She's had a Bible in all the uh, state offices at one time. They choose to get rid of them. But there's no ignorance. Of, listen, you can't go to a judge and say, well, I didn't know the law. The judge will say, well, you know what? You could have known what the law was. You can, go, you can go to a traffic judge and say, well, Your Honor, when they taught about stop signs in driver school, I wasn't there that day. I had the flu. Oh, well, tough. You shouldn't learn what the word stop meant. Didn't you go to grade school? Yeah, I went to grade school. Wasn't stop one of your, your spelling words? Well, yeah. Well, what do you think it meant in driving a car? So you can't plead ignorance with a judge, and you ain't going to do it with God. Now, there may be nations, and like I said, I said China, maybe I'm wrong, but maybe you cannot have access to a Bible. Maybe the internet is blocked. I, I mentioned China because they're vast in uh, electronics and all that. If you get an electronic King James Bible, you may get it from China. And then you may have some kind of access. It may cost your life. Before you put that gadget in plastic and sell it to an American. You see, Jerusalem is the center of the world. These people had what God told them. We have the word of God. And yet, like Judah in Jerusalem, we don't do what God tells you to do. And you think God is very happy with the church? Have you read what God says about the church in, in Revelation chapter 3? It makes him sick. We're rich. We have no need of nothing. Don't you think that Judah and Jerusalem were rich? In time of Solomon, it says that silver was just like a rock on the ground. Never mind silverware. Solomon had goldware for his utensils. Yet God was lacking and the more they grew, the more God lacked. And the more they became, the more God became an afterthought. And like America, Jerusalem had churches in every neighborhood. We read it, in every street. They had monuments and statues everywhere, just like you'll find in America. And America is going to fall by the judgment of God because America can pick up Ezekiel. America can pick up Jeremiah. You can hear these videos. You can take these videos up to President Obama and say, hey, listen to what's going on. Listen to what the Bible says, Mr. President. You know, if somebody would bring one of these videos to the President of the United States, and the President said, no, I don't want to hear it. Turn it off. I got my religion. Or whatever he said. He's going to stand before God. Well, you know, I didn't listen. I had it turned off. I didn't want to. You're without excuse. You're without excuse. You know, if, before you put a guy in office in, in January as the President of the United States, you ought to have him write Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Ezekiel down in his own words. Because these books show the condition presently in America that was in Judah and the reason why they got sacked. Verse 8, Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I, even I, am against thee, and will execute judgments in the midst of thee, in the sight of the nation. Ezekiel is sitting there in Babylon with a group of Jews that have been taken captive. And God says to him, I ain't done. Well, why, God? Why ain't you done? Because those people over there, my people, have not listened to me. 
I had spanked there behind, and you know what? He went back and stole the cookie. You know what's worse about stealing the cookie is that? He broke the cookie, cookie jar and then blamed the dog for doing it. I got to call that boy back into the room, pull his pants down, and take him over my knees again. And you know what he's going to do for the third time? He's going he's gonna to go out there and he's going to go steal cookies from the grocery store. And he's going to become even worse. And you know what I'm going to have to do as his father? I'm going to have to take him out of the picture. Death is one of these things. And fire. That's death and hell. That's burning the city and people being killed by the flames of the city and ending up in hell. The knife, that's the sword. Remember Jeremiah kept saying uh, famine, drought, the sword? Je uh, Ezekiel is using the knife. You know, you may become so sinful in your life, guys, that, okay, that's it. What expression does a parent use sometimes? I brought you into this world, and I can take you out? Where do you think that came from? The God that's angry with his children, his people. How many Jews died during Jeremiah and Lamentations and while Ezekiel was writing? Why did God let it happen? God wouldn't do such a thing. God is love. God caused that hurricane. Look what he's doing to his own people. We're reading about, listen, we're not, we're reading about the love of God, but we're reading about the, la the wrath of God. We're reading about a holy God who cannot allow sin. All right, so what do you do with Ezekiel? Somebody comes up to you. God hates sin, but he loves the sinner. You want to quote to me Jeremiah in the book of Ezekiel? All together? And tell me that God loves the sinner? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes and shall not perish has not been written. What do you do with that one? And these are the people of God. Ezekiel is part of one or the second butt beating. And they did not get right. And some of you got children like that out there. Man, you beat them, you beat them, you beat them, you do it in love, you do it because the Bible says, spare not the rod. And you understand as a parent what, what God feels about Judah is like, oh, man. And it's a shame that people won't listen. I think in verse 9, I believe. And I will do in thee that which I have not done. And whereunto I will not do any more the like. Because of all thy abominations. Was Solomon and Gomorrah a dragged out judgment or did it happen instantaneously? instantaneously maybe five mo minutes an hour okay at the most maybe do you know how long this siege of Jerusalem lasts even after the third time even after Nebuchadnezzar has destroyed everything including the temple carried everything to Babylon except for the Ark of the Covenant Jeremiah sits down in lamentation he says you know what I just saw a woman over there eating her baby I'm watching children walk down the street fainting because there's no food and no water. They're dying a slow death. The entire area of Judah and Jerusalem all together. Sin, the wages thereof, is death. You cannot prosper from your sin and expect God to be happy with you. It can't happen. Therefore the fathers shall eat the sons in the midst of thee. Lamentations 
Limitations 2 verse something like that. 20, I think it is. You know what Ezekiel hasn't heard yet? Ezekiel has not read Lamentations. Because God says to Ezekiel, they're going to. Therefore, the Father shall eat the sons in the midst of the day. We are recorded by Jeremiah to read that the mothers are doing it. And Ezekiel says, you know, I'm going to add to that, people. I'm going to tell you, not only is the mothers doing it, but the fathers are doing it. So when we read in Jeremiah, the children gather the, the wood, the fathers make the fire, something like that, and the women bake the, it's the whole family. You've been giving bread and wine to the queen of heaven. Well, let's see her give it back to you, okay? You've been killing your babies to Molech. Now you're going to kill your babies to a new god called your belly. Doesn't the Bible say to God their belly? Didn't Satan say about Job all that a man has he'll give for his life? Come here, son. Wasn't there one of the fairy tales about a, a, a woman who wanted to take two little children and throw them in the oven and eat them? And the son shall eat the fathers. How's that? Cannibalism. God says that is a judgment upon sin. And you can walk into a Roman Catholic church and they'll say that that wafer is the body of Christ and I am doing no injustice. You ask any priest, you ask any pope, and they will say that is the body of Jesus Christ. And you ask them about that wine. It is the blood of Jesus. They will tell you so. And you say, literal sir, treat it with respect. Literal sir, that is a body and that is the blood. And they will tell you yes. And yet, Cannibalism is a judgment of God upon sin. If God uses cannibalism and, and uh, Ezekiel and, Lamed, and uh, Jeremiah speak about this as prophecy because of sin, you think God's going to allow it in his worship service? Don't you think... Especially if you put it to the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who is God, that you're going to eat his body. You think God's going to allow that? If, if Jeremiah writes about the Queen of Heaven and God pronounces abominations upon him, you think that today, that when you worship Mary, the Queen of Heaven, you think God's going to allow it? These things are abomination to God, and yet you find it in a church in 2015 alive all over the world today. And you're going to say that uh, the Baptists come from uh, Roger Williams. You're going to say that the Luthers brought the Lutherans, but the Catholic Church came from Jesus Christ. Not by Scripture. There is the Father and the Son eating the Father and the Son. Now, according to Catholic tradition, that would have to be God the Father eating the Son, and the Son of Jesus Christ eating the Father. Oh, it don't sound good like that? It sounds blasphemous? But if you take the Bible, literal, as they will, when Jesus speaks in John chapter 6, here, take my flesh and eat it, they take it literal. Why can't I take this literal? The whole remnant of thee will I scatter into all the winds. And that's the last part of, of the hair of Ezekiel. In order to survive, they've got to eat their own family. Come on, let's put it down the real... real here, here it is, Thanksgiving meal. Mama brings out, brings out the big plate. Oh, we having turkey? No, we're having junior. Here, hon, here's a knife. You want to carve, in, carve into our son? I mean, I love my children. I mean, if it came to heaven, that, I, I'm going to have to die first. But do you see the condition this, this 
nation under God, and this nation is under God, the Jews, they're God's people. There's no remorse. It's just, okay, I'll eat you. For the parents or for the children. There is no food left. What do you think America's listen, what when, when these riots, they still the, the last riots they had, they stole hair extensions. Not one grocery store was broken into. They stole radios, CDs, and all, all the kinds of what do you think these people are gonna do when there's absolutely no food in America left? You think because you got a gun, you think that's gonna protect you? You only can have so many bullets. If it came down to dog you eat dog, they'll eat you. I hope I'm not here when that happens to America, but if America falls the path of, of Judah and Jerusalem, you've read about the stories of World War One and World War Two, haven't you? I was telling me the other night in a prison about a guy who who come to a Florida prison from Mexico. There's, there's the prisons don't feed you in Mexico. Every time the guy saw a roach, he pick it up and that was his dinner. You say, "Ew!" When you ain't got nothing else to eat. Wherefore, as I live, saith the Lord God, God binding an oath by His eternal life. How's that one? A God that was never created and a God that will never die. Surely because thou hast defiled my sanctuary. Do you read what was going on in that sanctuary? Do you realize that there was another altar put there by a king? That, that one time the brazen uh, the labor was, you know, the, the foundation was cut off. They were scraping the gold, the gold off the doors to pay foreign uh, 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 armies to help them out. They were bringing all, all the kinds of worship into this place that they were defiling the temple even one point says they were eating pork they were bringing the lame animals the sick animals with all thy detestable things and with all thy abominations there does that sound good what if god walked into a typical american baptist church today i don't mean American Baptist, I'm just saying, a, a Baptist church in America, and walked in there and said, you know what, this church is abominable, it's detestable. Oh, Lord, no, not us, look at all the people we got. Yeah, look how rich you are. You have no need of me at all. Gabriel, yes, bark bag, please. Here, Your Honor, here, Your Lord, here, Judge, here, God. Imagine God throwing up. And that's what he says about the church age. Neither shall my eyes spare, neither will I have any pity. Look how far their sins have got him. A third, you know how many men are called of God during this time? Two. You know how many men bring Israel out of Babylon into the land? Two. A third part of thee shall die with the pestilence. That's disease. AIDS, gonorrhea, mold, mildew, flu, epidemics. And with famine shall they be consumed in the midst of thee. Famine, no food. Dust bowls. And a third part shall fall by the sword, army, weapons, round about thee. And I will scatter a third part into all the winds. North, south, east, west, and whatever. The 360 degree dial of direction. And I will draw out a sword after them. Someone went down to Egypt and he sent Nebuchadnezzar. Yes, sir. Yes, Lord. I got a job for you. Yes, Lord. What do you want me to do? What you go down to Egypt? All right. What? 
Jeremiah's built a little uh, foundation down there by the clay uh, furnace where they make bricks. Oh, yes, sir. I believe I know where it is. There's some Jews down there. Yes, sir. Go get them. Yes, sir. Any other orders? Spare Jeremiah. Yes, sir. Come on, army. Let's go. Eat them. They're running to eat them. Esau catches them. Please spare my life, spare. Here, you are, you're a Babylonian uh, army fellow? Yes, sir. I've caught, I've caught some of these Jews. How much do you give me for them? Moab closes the border. You guys can't come here. But Ruth, Ruth, Ruth came from Moab, and, and she became the, the great-great-grandmother of David. And all that. Do you got? No. I'm not going to let you through. Suffer. Thus shall my anger be accomplished. God's anger accomplished when he gets them. And I will cause my fury to rest upon them, people. And I will be comforted. And they shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken it in my zeal when I have accomplished my fury in them. You can get so out of whack of your sinful life and your wickedness that God's only comfort is to destroy you. There are going to be some Christians when they walk away from the judgment seat of Christ with no crowns at all. God's going to say, satisfied. Where's your crown? No crowns? All right, I'm comforted. You don't deserve any crowns. You don't deserve any recognition. I wonder what kind of new name you're going to get. Or I will make thee waste. A dump. A garbage pail. And a reproach among the nations that are round about thee. In the sight of all that past. There are going to be jokes about the Jews. Ah, there's your temple. Where's your city? You read all about that, even in Ezra and Nehemiah. So shall it be a reproach and a taunt, instruction, and astonishment unto the nations that are round about thee. You guys better not mess up. Look what I did to my people. You better take knowledge. Do you know when the church grew in the book of Acts? When there was persecution. The church grew. Fire turns on activity. I bet there was a lot of people who acknowledged God when they saw that city burning. In fear of their city. Jonah walks into Nineveh and says God's going to destroy this day, something like that, in 40, whatever it is. Well, God has such a power in that city. Such a way. We need to repent. <laughs> what made the city re repent? What made the city get right? What was it? The fear of God. And what are the nations looking at Jerusalem now? Wow. Look what that God can do. I've never seen Dagon do that. I've never seen Molech do that. I've never seen Mary hasn't been born yet. Asterisk do that. Never seen Baal do that. I will execute judgments in thee in anger, in fury, and in furious rebukes. I, the Lord, have spoken it. When I shall send upon them the evil arrows of famine. That's interesting. Arrow. That's another good study word in the Bible. Which shall be for their destruction. And which I will send to destroy you. And I will increase the famine upon you. And will break your staff of bread. There ain't going to be nobody going to bring you no food. They're not going to fly food in. They're not going to bring you wheat. You know how the Antichrist does it? You don't buy or sell anything unless you have the mark. The food will be there in the tribulation. 
but you can't access it. Now, there's going to be some nations that are going to help the Jews. You realize at this point in time in Jeremiah and, and, and Ezekiel, no one helps them? Not one nation has helped them at all. We're told by Jesus there are some nations that are going to help the Jews in the tribulation. Not now. The Jews have done worse of all the Jewish history and yet future. You're going to hardly see a Jew in a Roman Catholic church unless he really loves that girl. You will not see your typical Jew have any idols or anything like that. Listen, they're clean. They try to be clean. They try. Listen, they may be worshiping the wrong God, the wrong Savior, the, the wrong Messiah. But pretty much they try to keep their, I mean, they're, they're going downhill. Probably match any Jewish person lost with any life of a saved Christian. They know what's right and wrong. They won't eat on the, on the Sabbath. They won't do things on the Sabbath according to what God has said. Back here, they're, they're doing it everything all the time, 24-7. Break the staff of bread. Now, who witnessed that? Jeremiah. So I will send upon you famine and evil beast. <laughs> Isn't the sword not enough? Isn't the famine not enough? The animals are going to get so hungry. <laughs> hey, look at that. There's some, there's some brown meat. <laughs> Jews are brown. And it may even be cooked in desert temperatures a little bit. A little tartar. Just a little bit cooked. You read about any animals in the tribulation period going berserk? And they shall bereave thee. Animals will, will, will take away your family. Animals will take away your loved ones. Animals will have you for dinner. And plus, uh, pestilence. There's the diseases again. And blood shall pass through thee. Murder. Killing. Death. And I will bring the sword upon thee. I, the Lord, have spoken it. Listen, my friend, let me tell you, everything we read in chapter 5 is because of one thing. One thing only. S-I-N. Death, destruction, the anger of God. Disobedience to what God has said. And when God has told you, what must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And when you reject what he has said, and he cashes you off into the eternal lake of fire forever. God has told you what, how to get out of it. Just like he sent Ezekiel and Jeremiah to the Jews. He sends his word to you today. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. He said his word's going to go throughout all the world. His word has traveled all around the world. Well, what about the nations now? What about you? If you're hearing this message, you're watching this message, don't worry about the heathen. Don't worry about those that never heard. You have heard. You are without excuse. I believe it was Pilate. I could be wrong. What will you do with this man named Jesus? And the Bible tells you. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And thou shalt be saved. From the wrath of God. He that has the Son has life. I may be quoting that verse wrong. But he that has not the Son has the wrath of God abiding upon him. Abiding. Living. You'll be living when the wrath of God when you reject the Lord Jesus Christ, according to a street preacher called John the Baptist.